say my wife. Anyone else on the phone line? My third vaccine Friday. Yeah, I gotta stop. I'll get mine. Um, you had Moderna or Moderna. Yeah, Moderna. If you get Moderna again with the booster, they give you a half dose. Does that have any side effects or anything? I I got the uh yeah. was it the second? Oh no, no we, oh we got the flu shot last time after we had enough time in between. And I actually felt that flu shot for a couple of days. Yeah. Um the shingle shot. Yeah. Oh that one the second one. Yeah. I didn't have any the second one. Yeah, coming up in December. Yeah. You're okay. I will call the November 9th Port Edwards Village Board meeting to order. And I would ask the clerk to call the roll, please. Okay, Trustee Bingham. Present. Trustee Duncan. Here. Trustee Brendan. Here. Trustee Mantle. Here. Trustee Mitchell. Here. Trustee Saylor. He will be here shortly, we hope. Okay, I would ask everybody to please remove your hats. Let's all stand, face the flag. <clears throat> we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, after which we'll have a moment of silence, especially now with uh, Veterans Day approaching, or was yesterday, whatever. So, no. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God indivisible, and with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. It's actually Thursday. That's what I thought. Pardon? Veterans Day is Thursday, 11th day, 11th month, 11th hour. Did everybody see that uh, today and tomorrow the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier is they're letting the public uh, go by, and a lot of them are leaving flowers and everything. So it's the 100th anniversary of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, a World War I veteran. Uh, and I guess it was 1921 when the uh, he was buried in Arlington. Right back from France. Eric, good to see you. Did you cut your speech short? I did. <laughs> okay, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which will include the meeting minutes from the 12 October 21 board meeting and our vouchers for the month, which are the monthly bill, journal entries, et cetera. We have a motion by Duncan, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mitchell. Any discussion or anybody want to remove an item from the consent agenda to <coughs> discuss further? Hearing no request, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Public comments. Um, I will explain how that goes and then if, all are here to uh, uh, three people would like to speak. So if you're all here on the same topic, we'll just include you all, you know, at that time. Or you have an option with uh, uh, a trustee uh, not wanting you to. In other words, we can you can speak at public comment, which is now on your topic. Or if there's no objection by a trustee, when that item would come up on the agenda. Okay. Now you're limited to three minutes, and the village administrator will be keeping tally of that. Um, once the uh, discussion of the trustee starts, a trustee may ask you a question 
but you cannot get into a discussion with that trustee. He is to, he or she is to ask the question that they need to make a decision and that's where it stays. And while we are discussing at the table, if a trustee wants to go off for some other reason, they have to request from the chair to go off table. Um, so I guess I would like to know, uh, see Mr. Martin, Mrs. Diggles, Mrs. Lindholm, do you, would you let me know what topic you would like to address? Uh, I would like the village to consider looking at some guidelines for um, people being coming into the village, such as sex offenders and placed in homes. Is that what uh, Mrs. Lindholm, Mrs. Diggles, are you? I would want to take it one step further to ask if you have any ideas how we can stop this from happening on Friday. Okay. Because I, I know it will take time for some sort of, you know, rule to happen. Okay, and we will, uh, it sounds like everybody's on the same page then or want to speak to address the same topic. Um, I will start with Mr. Martin and if you would please stand up because you're sitting in a corner there where, especially me with my bad hearing, I have a hard time hearing you. So if you'd step over to the uh, dais, I would appreciate it. Three minutes. No. All right, thank you. My name is Tim Martin. I'm a resident over at 901 Brentwood Drive. I'd like to, if you would, the village forward to consider getting and adopting some guidelines, uh, which you may or may not know. But my next door neighbor is a sex offender coming into the village. I don't believe he is a, a relative of my neighbors by the last name. Um, I talked to the parole officer there and um, working through them right now. I understand that your hands are tied, limited in what you can and cannot do, but to help for future cases that may want to be reside in the village, this would be really helpful. They call us all uh, blindsided and um, I think our neighborhood is trying to gear up and do the best we can to get some answers from the state. Is that it, Mr. Martin? That's it. Okay, Ms. Lindholm? Found out that this sex offender has been non-compliant. I don't know what for. They don't give you those reasons. Um, he moved in on Friday. We just found out about it this past Friday. So we have had less than a week to try to organize to figure out how this can be diverted. We have Mr. Martin, <clears throat> this guy could be out shooting baskets and then looking directly at his house. My daughter lives across the street. She homeschools her two children. I just don't understand how this can happen in our village that a sex offender can move into this home. One of the homes that my daughter looked at before deciding on this home was across the street from a sex offender. We looked, we had looked at it online and then we did our due diligence and we said, I don't even want to look at that house because we, we can't deal with this with a young family. And I know none of you would want this across the street from your grandchildren, your daughter, your teenage daughter that lives right next door. So I'm hoping that you guys could give us some guidance to stop this before Friday happens. He's going to be moving into a five bedroom home. Yeah. So is there going to be more that get to move into this house? Because this is deemed a great neighborhood for him. I need help from you guys to stop this. Um, you know, and it's not like Natalie's going to be able to say, well, I'll just move. Who's going to want to buy her house? That's a, she didn't buy that house. Be, she bought that house because it was in a great neighborhood. And I, I just want the board to be aware of what's going on and help us in any way to stop this. It doesn't seem like the parole officer has been any help. She's been given misinformation. Like I said, you can read online. It says he's non-compliant. I don't know what it's for. Is he not, you know, he just, he was in jail for four years and is just now coming into the community. 
And I'm just hoping that you guys have some ideas because we've been trying, I tried contacting Representative Coop, got an answering machine. I, I, I don't know how this can happen, but I'm sure none of you want this type of situation across from your grandchildren and your children. I mean, my daughter's not going to be, she homeschools. I'm, I'm sure she's not going to let them out for recess anymore without her or her son being right there to watch her. And how do you explain this to a five and an eight-year-old? Okay, we have a sex offender across the street from you. Um, you know, how can this be a safe spot to put them in? I don't think the parole officer or whoever did this investigation could have been looking too far. So, so well, there's Ripple Creek a couple blocks away. The school's a ways away. This is kind of more of like a dead end street where you've got a lot of kids that play there. And, you know, like my daughter, I'm sure is going to say, we want him to heal. We want him somewhere, but I don't see how this is the place for him. And I'm just hoping that you guys, you guys are all smarter than I am, I'm sure of it, that you're that you have other ideas on how we can stop this from happening. But I can guarantee you, if he gets in on Friday, he's there, and then it's deemed a nice house. And so let's bring in another guy. And so I guess I ask you, what what can we do or what can you do to stop this before Friday? Because once Friday comes and he's moved in. I don't see how we can stop it. Terry, um, have you spoken with Chief Drew on any avenues to pursue with the state? Or I have not. I mean, see, I, I've been out of it for six years, Scott, but is there any people they could contact on the state level? Um, I. My only thought, and I talked with Trustee Grundon today, is possibly the Attorney General's office. I believe that would be oversight for probation and parole. Um, I did speak with probation and parole when I got the notification, informed them of the neighborhood and the neighborhood dynamics. Their investigation was already complete, and because there's no parks, schools, and whatever, they had already made their determination. Does school have any effect on it? Somebody who's homeschooling their children, it is a school. That I do not And they know. are accredited. They have to mm -hmm. show performance that their children are doing right no, work. There's no requirements. The homeschooling has no requirements in the state of Wisconsin. If they do, they're just volunteering. There are none. Okay, well, they're, I know they take tests. <clears throat> that, Again, that are, there, there, there are none. The Supreme Court said you cannot require it. The United States Supreme Court. So there are none in Wisconsin. So they do, but I don't. Yeah. Scott, just a question. Mm -hmm. When I'm looking at it, and I didn't look up on CCAP, it said third degree sexual assault. Right. Correct? Did not say it's third degree sexual assault of a child. Correct? It did not, but. So. Did you, are you aware of who the victim was? The victim was a family member. Um, right. And there was a charge of sexual assault of a child that was, was dismissed but and, read in. And, and read in. Mm -hmm. okay, and this was in Wood County? Okay, uh, hold on, Dana. Tierra? I'm not sure. Were you trying? A charge that's not, that was read in was for a child under the age of 16. So when I spoke with the probation and parole officer, one of the things that she initially recommended was that we could, as a village, look at creating some ordinances where we had more control over how we would receive these uh, particular type of folks with these challenges. So which, when I look at the sex offender maps, from Rapids and Nakusa, they're very densely populated. So I feel like at this point, we've got to get proactive in setting some boundaries and getting some ordinances in place. So what I would suggest is 
if we could get that on our agenda for potentially working on that and getting Nick involved. Dana, your feelings on that? That's your committee. I, 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 I'm just going to say it, okay? I understand everybody's concern. And quite frankly, I have, I had 17 years in the criminal justice system defending people. And I will tell you right now that I will guarantee there's probably three unconvicted sex offenders living in Port Edwards right now that you don't know. That you walk by, you see on the street, you run into them at the gas station. It's not the ones who are convicted that you have to worry about. It's the ones that are out there unconvicted because this guy is going to have a monitor and he's going to be subject to probation and he's going to be subject to a probation hold. I wish we could make this whole thing go away and stop this because I see firsthand how horrible this is and what ramification it has on people and children and the public and lives and how broken it is, but we have to go more involved than just saying we're going to create an ordinance to handle somebody that's out there. We have to. We should be working on it. If we're going to do a, an ordinance, we should do an, a sort of a policy that the village has, working with the police department about how we're going to allow people who are subject of sexual assault and uh, to feel safe in going to the police or going to counselors or therapists or people to disclose this so that we can weed this stuff out. Not just this guy, but in general, because it is becoming systematic and it is becoming a cancer in not just this air community, but in the entire state and the country. And if we don't start doing something now, this is just a symptom. This is not the cause. This guy got caught. Okay. What he did is reprehensible, but he, I'm not as concerned about him as those that are out there that I know exist. So I'll be willing to look at it and I'll be willing to put things in and work with everybody to put in place things. But by the same token, I am not going to just do that. If I'm going to start something, I'm going to start a whole program where we can work together to try to in, or make it beneficial, working with the school district and the police department and how we're going to deal with anybody who feels that they're sexually assaulted or abused or who feels uncomfortable because of the glaring eye of somebody who uh, they think may be, we, we got to do more than just that. I agree totally. Because it's a it's a community just Terry it's a community thing and I'm uh, yeah that that's the way it's got to be is the way you said so um, I'll I, be willing to tackle it no problem I'll put it on the committee we'll talk about it and have it in the docket I don't think we're going to be able to do anything about this by Friday the only thing we can do there is make sure that. Um, those in charge know who the probation officer is, and I assume you know, Scott, so that if there's a problem, you can just pick up a phone. Um, the issue with that is there's been some changes at probation and parole. So the agent, that I, actually, yeah, the agent that I actually spoke to that got the notification has now been promoted and moved to Stevens Point. But um, I, I know that the, um, there's been quite a few that have reached out mm -hmm. and spoken with Patricia, I believe. Um, so again, that's that's something I can certainly follow up on and okay. make sure I have Terry, a Terry, you wanted to mention something else? I just had a question on the monitor. So he's wearing this ankle bracelet. If he walks over to Tim Martin's house, is an alarm going to go off? Or is it just no. telling him that he's over at his house? Is he under house no, arrest or is he just keep yeah. you, just keep he's monitor? Just be up the monitor. Okay. So, Tierra? Yeah. Go ahead, Tiara. So we've had kids that have been on these GPS ankle monitors, and I can tell you that they're not that precise. So if that person would cross over that property line, there's no guarantee that anybody would be notified because the, the way that the properties come together, they're so close. So it's, they, they can't manage it that close. 
closely. So that's not a, that's not a secure that's not a level of protection. Okay, Chief, um, would you be available? I know you will <coughs> to work closely with Chairman Duncan. Of course. And then I would impose on you further is uh, if you get a hold of Craig Lambert and just run the situation by him because Craig has not dealt with this stuff a lot. The district attorney, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yep. Um, at least he could give us a few pointers in how to proceed. Absolutely. And then maybe even persuade him to when Chairman Duncan has a meeting on it, maybe he could be a resource person if he would come down. Thank you. Just so that there's some level of um, understanding of what is involved. When you're on probation and parole, you have no rights per se. The agent can walk into your house at any time without a warrant and search the house. They can put you on a hold immediately. Any violation, anything at all, if you see that there's a problem, if you report it, it can be dealt with in very short order. And, um, and I say this knowing full well because I'm only a block or half a block away from all of you. I know very well what's going on. So this is not something I take lightly. I've thought long and hard about how this should be handled and what should be done. So. Okay, this, this uh, we'll have three more minutes total and then we're going to have to move on. Everybody clear now, Terry? You understand where we're gonna go with this? And I understand probably our only option for trying to stop this would be to talk to the attorney general. That'd probably be the case, but even that's going to be difficult to, because it's so many layers between there and the local probation and parole office. Your your best bet is is to keep track of your kids, know what's going on, let them know that there's a problem, and if you see anything that's at all a problem or it's going to be a concern, report it to the police department so they can put them on a hold and take them into custody. Any violation at all, and he'll be gone. And then that means there's a potential that he'll be revoked. And if he's revoked, he'll spur, spend his time in the state prison. I'm not sure how you would approach a five and an eight-year-old with this, but I guess Un that will be. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in this day and age, I've learned that five and eight-year-olds are much more uh, aware of this stuff than what I was at that age. <laughs> Joe? Sad that they have to be. I understand perfectly, but... Okay, uh, the chief is going to, uh, just a minute here, the chief is going to graciously follow up on that. Dana has, has uh, uh, agreed to bring that to his committee. As far as the village goes, unless any of you folks want to correct me, this is about uh, is where we have to start. I mean, we just can't make up a ordinance out of the blue moon without some facts, you know, and, and other stuff. And I, I think it's we're also fortunate to have a chairman that knows a thing or two about the law and a chief of police that will also be, you know, reaching out to the uh, district attorney. And Josh Cole down in Madison is a very, very uh, good person. I went to some training that he was speaking at, but basically the best place to start right off the bat about the do's and don'ts and the legality is with your local district attorney and i'm not so sure that his office wouldn't tell you to start there too so. okay uh, uh tiara then eric uh, one of the things that i wanted to make sure everybody understands probation and parole is very much uh, working with them. It's like working with the social workers in the child welfare system. Their caseloads are completely unmanageable. We as a village cannot count on them to make sure that our kids are safe. They can't do it, they won't do it. They don't have time to do it. They didn't know his name. They didn't know the address. They didn't know of the new placement in Port Edwards. And then after I had that conversation, they denied knowing it after. So I just wanted to make that point and I oh, understand. Oh, okay, uh, Eric, and then we will move on. Um, so I live one block in one house. 
I'll wait for you guys. <laughs> um, one thing that I've told my kids, I have a nine and or ten and nine and ten year old, um, is one of the benefit, not a benefit, but one of the good things about this individual is he's not a five eight regular looking dude. He's six six. So what I've told my kids, <clears throat> six six on Brentwood kind of stands out. So if, if you by my house, <laughs> <laughs> so if you see a six six foot six inch guy walking around or walking the dog or whatever, you know you need to separate. Go go the other way. You know I I feel what everybody's saying. Um, I'm in the same boat. Young kids living on Brentwood. So that's the only thing that I can tell my kids is if you see this guy walking around, that's all I'll say. Okay, Natalie, I forgot you. <laughs> Did you have something to say? Um, I would maybe add a little bit to okay. it if that's okay. You bet. Sorry about that. That that's wasn't okay. <laughs> Um, Well, as you guys know, I sent an email, and hopefully I don't know if that will be discussed tonight, but um, I just want to reiterate their concerns and ask that we look into putting some sort of guidelines into place because I think – to assume that since he's been caught, he's not as much of a threat is very dangerous thinking. <laughs> if that were the case, these people wouldn't be on the sex offender registry for their entire life. They would be cured, right? If we only have to worry about them when they haven't been caught, the ones who have been caught wouldn't have any problems. And that's just not true. Um, I sure hope this guy has gotten the help he needs and that he can go on living his life, but to assume that he's not a threat because he's being monitored, because he's gotten caught, I think is very dangerous thinking for um, the families in our community and to, you know, say, well, the second something happens, we let them know and it's dealt with. Well, what about when that's too late? What if that's your kid or your grandkid? I get he has to come out. He has to live somewhere. I understand that. But it makes no sense to put him in a neighborhood with all these children. We had a talk with our eight-year-old daughter today and explained to her, you know, on eight-year-old terms, on Friday, unless something changes, we have a man moving in across the street who did something really bad to a child. And so we went over our guidelines and our rules with them. And my eight-year-old daughter said to me, mom, if he did something this bad to a child, why is he moving in next to all these kids? That's a great question. I think it's sad that we have two agents coming to check out the area, which just means making sure we're not next to a school or a park or a daycare and not considering what this neighborhood is. There's families and kids everywhere. You know, you wouldn't put a drug addict in a crack house. Why are you gonna put someone with this sort of a struggle in our neighborhood with all of these kids? It's not safe for them, even if he doesn't act on this. And I sure hope he never acts on whatever he was dealing with ever again. But it's still emotionally distressing to the families in the neighborhood and to the kids. I've already heard of people being afraid for this in their own home and in their own community. And I know that's not what any of us want in Port Edwards. So I just want to emphasize what they said about trying to come up with a plan to hopefully prevent this from happening again in the future. Well, I appreciate it. And, and um, I think we are going to, we're starting off well with a lot of information and the, the uh, planning and legislative property committee will be taking care of this. And I know chief will be uh, checking out the initial things that we have to get checked out to move forward. The unfortunate thing is with uh, local governments usually don't tell the state what to do and you miss something, but um, sometimes we do tell them what to do and that you miss something, especially, you know, you mentioned not a school around yada, 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 but they should take into effect how many children of that age are around. So, Thank you very much, and uh, please keep in touch with Chief, and call me anytime, and uh, we will uh, just keep us in touch, and Chief, will you please 
get back to them too and what you can and can't absolutely be fine. Okay, thanks again. Um, I have nothing for the president's report tonight. Uh, committee reports, airport commission. It's uh, we haven't we just had Jeremy here uh, last month uh, updating us on the uh, the things going on at the airport. So I would move from there into public works and Sherman Bingham. Uh, we did not meet in November. Uh, I know that uh, public works uh, director is preparing for winter and wrapping up obviously there's a lot of leaves out there so still finishing up the fall type duties uh, we will be meeting this month mr president and just to get caught up in anything that the public works uh, director wants to share with us okay uh chairman mansell parks and recreation please we met october 28th um budget discussion was we there's no changes from the original discussion uh when and that was going to fhr um for the 2022 parks will receive ten thousand and five thousand of sanitary and then it's going to flip flop every year um making sure that we all can have some kind of a budget to work with um we talked about having capital improvement plan for the parks different different things that we need to get done in the parks um talking about gazebo shelters uh adding grills um that and that kind of stuff different design uh for the empty space over at what are we calling it central park yes this week at central park um uh, <laughs> and then putting in potentially putting in gas fire pits with a timer to help utilization for the skating areas um Central Park. Church. Triangle, Triangle Park. Central Park. Triangle Park. Triangle Park. You never heard that in a couple years you lived here? I live very across the street from it. Whatever park that is. Or Triangle Park. I never heard it. Today it's Central Park. Next month it might be something else. Um, Eric, I'm um, Talking about the bike trails being redone, different holiday events, the tree lighting ceremony. I think we. Well, so we, what, the eighth, the eighth, right? Yep. They uh, give that'll give us the week after Thanksgiving for then to get uh, not only our tree up but the uh, other accessories. And uh, so the eighth at six p.m. here. Yeah. Okay. And then um, the new business that we did discuss was the railroad grant for up to twenty-five thousand dollars for beautification of the trail from the tender to Seneca. Um, has been. Submitted by December 1st. Just and then, submitted tonight. We hit the go button tonight. So there you go. And then a legacy grant for bike trail improvements and with the kayak uh, inputs as well. Otherwise, we will meet November 18th at four. Any questions? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. I would ask the Parks and Recreation Committee to revisit the proposed dog park because just recently I read an extensive article that Wisconsin Rapids is considering one. So I don't know if that's gonna change their direction. Rapids is very serious, evidently, from what the article said uh, about a location in Rapids. So I guess I'm just curious, is that group, which way is that group gonna go? And, you know. The group does not wanna work with Rapids. Because <laughs> uh, Rapids was the one that kicked them out of Rapids at the old, old dog barn. So uh, the, group, the group is very happy to continue working with us. Uh, Rapids, I've already talked to Mr. The Mayor. Rapids is having some challenges on location. No one wants it <clears throat> at a location around them. So, so there's yeah. overt and covert. And Rapids could say they want a dog park and then they don't do anything to further. There you go. Yes. <laughs> OK. I'm not saying that's you what's going on. Us, John, I'm you just still saying want to that that's well. Or... I didn't know the background on that. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I read the article. It sounded the, the person who wrote the article wrote it in a very positive way, and I and I go, oh, yeah. what's going on in Portnow with it, that group? Was it in the uh, Tribune? 
Where else do you read a newspaper? Okay, well, then more than likely it was written by somebody in the city because you basically can write your own articles and hand it in and they just publish Okay, I withdraw <laughs> the agenda <laughs> item. I Chairman Mansell, is there anything else? Let's man? not cooperate with anybody. No, good. You're good? Okay. Uh, Dana, you did not have a meeting, but is no. there anything you would like to mention for from the pit committee and maybe your early thinkings about the having uh, an agenda item on the discussion tonight in the public comments? I think that uh, we will be putting that on the agenda and there'll be a broad thing. I think it'll be everything from the potential of which have law enforcement, have school officials, have a sex abuse counselor available possibly. I mean, one of the things that we talk about, most of the time these assaults are, don't happen by just grabbing a child off the street. It's somebody who knows somebody or somebody who grooms somebody. You know, if somebody who's much older than your child starts having an inordinate in, uh, interest in them, start watching stuff like that. And I think some of that stuff we need to consider bringing in and making part of the public awareness. Agree 100%. So. Anything on the DMI thing that you can share? Or just nothing really going on. They're, are they still meeting up, Buzz? I haven't talked with you about uh, Yes, uh, every Wednesday. Um, the, the construction work at the rail yard is about 80% complete replacing a lot of the, the rails. That looks pretty uh, good, by the way. Yeah, so, they're doing good work. It's a good, a good company. Uh, they are, uh, they, they're receiving their closed bids for the demolition companies to continue demolition. So I should hear about that tomorrow from them. They were supposed to get the closed bids uh, in October and that'll see some progress going on there. And then, uh, yeah. Alrighty, Chairman Saylor, I purposely left you to last because we didn't think you would cut your speech so short down to public safety. Uh, public safety. Public safety. All right, we met on November 2nd. Um, we just had a discussion on from the fire chief um, about budget stuff and some other odds and ends. We had a discussion with the with Chief Drew on some um, budget stuff. And we had a complaint about some jake breaking. They wanted some signage, whatever, but that was not in their area. So we've referred that to Town Port Edwards. So with that, we have a motion. Do you want to mix them? Motion transfer. The motion. motion. Not, oh, that's on the finance. Yeah, we'll I get to that. Know. But we did, we did discuss it. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, so other than that, I'm sorry. Other than that, it was just a, it was a, a pretty um, uneventful meeting. So now we're ready to get to that. Now we'll do the okay. finance. Yeah. 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 So we had a FHR meeting on November fourth. Um, we discussed the the draft and the budget. Um, uh, we talked about the fee schedule for adjusted salaries for employee positions and are we withdrawing the motion officially? That's the staff recommendation based on after meeting discussion. Uh, discussion between whom I would like to know that. Uh, it, was, it was more for a, of a clarification of why we needed to move funds back into an account that's already has the money for the new purchase. You and the chief? Yeah, chief, yeah. Look at me, chief. You're in agreement with that? Yeah. Um, whatever, however the board wants to do it is fine by me, is what okay. I, uh, okay. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't either. Okay, so what, 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 the, what the original on? motion was is to take the, the fees that were collected from the sale of the, okay. the uh, car I remember this. and put it into a 400 account <laughs> to be earmarked for a replacement vehicle. But the budget, the budget has added basically those fees on the back end. And so they're gonna take those fees and put them back in the general fund. So basically you're robbing Peter to pay Paul and it's already happened, correct? Okay. Yeah. Are we good with it? 
<laughs> We've never done that in the past. I mean, public works trucks have been sold for 11, 12,000 and that's, it's never happened. The fire truck was sold, mm -hmm. that didn't happen. You know, it didn't, we didn't move funds. Chief, would you like to redraw, withdraw your uh, motion? Um, that my my only reason for bringing the motion was back in June when when we trade uh, sold the squad. I was asked to to bring it back to the committee to have right, a motion. Right. Okay, um, so 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 yes, right. whatever so is easiest is, for this Diane. is budget preparation time. So all budgets go to the man. Okay, so I will ask Boz, would you like to withdraw the vote? Yes, because it, it, it'll put an overage in that account, and it's not a savings account. It's for a specific purchase of an item. So 20000 20000 buys a truck. And, Otherwise, you'd have 50000 being aware of how the school district does it and the state does it, that's the general gist. You budget for new items, sell stuff sold, gets put into the general fund. And that's the way it is, because how many of you gone to the UWSP sale that they have at their little thing when they're selling desks and chairs and it, it all gets put back in the state general fund. It does not go to the university directly. Very good. Moving on. Item number two. Mr. Tierra's Sarah. got a question. Pardon? Tierra's got a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Tierra, go ahead. I have a budget question. Um, under the public safety, is this the appropriate time? Yeah, go ahead. So I saw at the last committee meeting, or my understanding was there was not going to be a 3% increase. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. So my understanding, there was not going to be a salary increase for the fire department wages, but I see it is showing up in the... Um, Budget has that changed? Yeah, 3% across the all departments to keep everything equitable. Yep. So, do you remember? So, that's changed since what we discussed in the last committee meeting. Is that right? Yes. So, we budgeted a 3% increase for the fire payroll. We have not powered that down to the individual hourly wage increase. That's what we're oh. continuing discussion on, and me and Diane. We'll sit down and see if, if that makes sense or not. So just my my two bits on that, I think it's a bad idea to not stay with the pace of what we paid a lot of money for the study and the plan. And I think it could be potentially damaging on morale to have one specific department not get their um, same increase as everybody else's. That's all I've got to say about that. That was John. No, I, I, well, I was just going to say, refresh my memory, FHR committee. That wasn't the intent, was it? I mean, it's three percent. Everyone's got three. Every everyone got three percent. So I'm not sure what you're saying, Tiara. She's specifically recognizing. Can you that? Yeah, I can't talk very well. On our speak up. We, we, on we our fee schedule, there's a there's hourly rates for all our fire right, positions. Right. Right. We did not bump those up by three percent. What we did is gave over the forty-five thousand payroll. Right. We gave them three percent. So it's budgeted for to do that. What we got to do is make sure it makes sense to power that down to the hourly increases. And the only reason I haven't recommended we do that yet is because we've taken them up last year almost six to seven percent in many cases. So it, it would kind of uh, more, more discussion to follow on it. But at the end of the day. Fire payroll went up by 3%, just like everyone else. They're not short end of it. I think as far as the fire payroll, the chief and you and Diane and president, everybody can come to a conclusion and bring it. Yeah. Acknowledge your concerns. And more well, I'm comfortable with that, Tiara. So I think your concern will be addressed. Okay, so Mr. Chairman, anything else? All righty. Um, item number eight, we kind of took care of because I was nosy about DMI update. And so, Boz, I'll throw it right back to you and unfinished right. business. Where are we? Uh, well, that was it. Uh, yeah. The only the, the correspondence that we received pertaining to the very first comment of the night will be, if they're still here, will be included in the packet that you said, so it met, met the criteria 
So the uh, letter corresponds, I believe most of you received, if not, uh, that'll be included in the pack and that'll help uh, feed information into the PID committee. So just okay. for acknowledgement. New business from anyone. Mr. Chairman. Since we have no name for the park. <laughs> oh, no, we can't get rid of Central Park. We've had that. Well, it's either Central we, Park. We, I would pose that the committee look at having an official name for it. If you want to use it, Central Park, if you want to add, you know, like an, an honor of somebody, some something Central Park, whatever. But it's kind of when everybody's kind of going, well, I think it's Central Park. Let's just name it. Don't look at me. You're the chairman. Sure. Have it go to parks. Yeah. Yeah, name it after me. Have it on your agenda. <laughs> chairman Matt's so open. Got it. Anything else under new business? Uh, if not, we will go to village administrator. You have your uh, monthly report in front of you there. Nothing. Uh, our, our vaccination rates continue to get higher. <clears throat> Uh, just for your knowledge that the, uh, our students prior to the, the directive, the federal directive, was at about a 38% of vaccination rate as they stood in. We foresee that obviously will increase now that they want to power it down to a lower age limit. And we'll follow that with the school where you get these stats right off the, uh, the county website. So uh, we'll continue to track that if it makes uh, any decision making on our part necessary. No changes in our human resources or... or uh, Staff is the same. Uh, we have one applicant in the process now for fire uh, position, firefighter. That'll go through the uh, PFC. So we should see some action on that by the next board meeting, I think. Uh, no change in our payroll projects. As noted, we're kind of transitioning to winter, wrapping up. The last big thing, you notice the street or the trail signs have been installed. You'll notice them on our bike trails. You'll notice one downtown right here on the corner. Uh, that has a, a, a uh, designation. So you have the sign, has the map of the village on both sides, and they'll have little small placards of pointing to directional things, Butterfly Park, Splash Pad. Uh, got a lot of good comments. Uh, we are now working. So ours are installed. We're going to add one to the Ripple Creek area for the people that like to walk going on uh, their bunker. So that'll be an addition uh, in, the, in the future. But right now we're working with Nakusa and uh, Saratoga, so they're all looking the same all the way, and that was the money that the county gave us. So that project's uh, pretty much complete on our end. No change in safety, security. You see your data points there from fire and police budget, we're tracking execution, and we'll talk the budget here shortly. Uh, Nepco Lake, we should have another uh, citizens uh, meeting probably in the next sixty days, or even over the holiday. There's a lot of people living there now that they want to talk, chat about uh, some of the concerns that's been bubbling up since now they've had some time to digest uh, a lot of our discussion. Uh, so that'll be uh, presented to uh, the board uh, for either attendance or just kept at the administrator level to continue a dialogue. Redistricting, we are done. We talked about the CN grant, so that was submitted tonight. We also submitted the Legacy Foundation grant. This was a, a taking of what, I guess, uh, Eric, you did in the past last year that they kind of uh, discounted. Uh, we packaged a lot more stuff into it. So we're asking Legacy for a half a million dollars. That'll take us from our parks through our bike trails to our uh, Southern Park, adding bike trail uh, sections and basically do a major uh, upgrade and overhaul of our recreational network uh, from North to South. So. Uh, Let's see if the legacy, uh, and I, I appreciate <coughs> Kelly's work on that. Let's see if legacy helps us out with that project. Uh, so that was submitted as well tonight, uh, 15,000. Right now we're looking at the county has found some uh, something in their heart to give us more than 15,000. For kayaks, we're looking at closer to 30,000. Uh, so we should see a 30,000 grant for kayaks. And uh, we did receive a separate out of the blue just by poking at them from our insurance carrier Two thousand dollar grant for parks. They so just said, "We we pay enough. Here's two thousand bucks." So that was nice of our insurance company. Holes in kayak. We talked about the eight December, eight December uh, tree lighting uh, next door right here. 
we are uh, starting an initiative that I thought one or two may sign up. We got about six uh, interested groups that want to take advantage of uh, decorating a smaller tree around the village tree. <clears throat> so Port Auto, Bank, uh, Hair Stylist, uh, the shelter, animal shelter, and the dog park folks are all going to, uh, right now, that's, that's the start point, are all going to sign for a tree where they will decorate with their own, their own stuff. There's no, nothing out of the village. Uh, and that'll be a way for them to market to the community <coughs> what they do. So that'll be tied to our uh, tree lighting event. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's some federal issues and state issues just for information purposes there. And for those of you that have contacts at the uh, legislative level, uh, at, when it comes to the mandates, directing uh, employees and staff to be vaccinated, we do not fit in any of those categories. So we're not sweating that too much, even though we pretty much have a pretty high vaccination rate just by default on the staff. So I'm not concerned about that. But there are some state bills that are very directive in nature, uh, legal as well as the legal municipalities don't feel like this is gonna survive first contact in uh, coming out of the Senate, or at least a veto, uh, but they are very directive in nature of telling us what we as a village have to do with our housing. So they will direct us that out of our $180,000 of ARPA money, we have to put $20,000 towards housing. Right? That article was in the last Yeah, magazine. so it's very directive in nature. They don't think it's gonna survive. The League of Municipalities is totally against it. And there's a few other things in there. So if you just read through there, some good information. And if you have, uh, uh, so with to, uh, to poke uh, one of our legislators, either Teston or someone else group, uh, I would say uh, make your voice heard because all of them are negative impacts on the village. Just the small government party always telling I'm us sure. what we can and can't do. That's it. Uh, okay, and so that's that. Budget, you have your blue binder. That is the budget, version eight with the last minute tweaks. Don't need to go into it, it's easy reading. That'll be what will be presented again on the Committee of the Whole. 22nd, uh, 5 o'clock, Monday. Don't yeah. forget. No, so, I've been having it sign now. So, so go through that, uh, and we'll get public comment. Uh, it's not out for public comment yet, but we'll put some of those products out uh, when people are asking about what our revenue is, what our expenses are, very generic. And that may drive some uh, discussion at your level that we can uh, finalize. Uh, the one tweak, the county just approved their budget today. So we're getting the latest and greatest when it comes to taxing millage rate. So that we'll have that all incorporated into the numbers. It shouldn't change much, but we'll have those for the uh, 20 seconds. That's all I have. Yes, I know it's probably premature, but do, do you anticipate any trickle down effect with the infrastructure bill that was, I know it'll go <clears> through <throat> the states and yeah. do we have, you think we might have some opportunity? We have a, uh, a, a product that was sent to us that this is what Wisconsin will get from that. Okay. Uh, and it's very directive in how much it's going to go to certain pots of uh, certain programs, road programs, um, uh, safety, health and safety. That's all. So we have the bucket that's going to come to the state. What now the state is telling us, are they going to use existing programs and we just apply? or they're gonna create a new program that we have to uh, figure out what to do. Okay. What uh, I will work uh, with all the committees over the next uh, few months here is putting together our wish list of what we want. So when they actually identify a process, we'll be able to quickly throw something at them uh, and we'll take it from there. I okay. mean, uh, I mean a, a, a very broad wish list so we can get on a, on a start point for all our streets all our 15 miles of streets is asked for a couple million dollars to resurface it. Now we start the clock again going for all our streets. And that helps us budget internally mm -hmm. to catch up. Well, so that's, that's an example, because this, this money is gonna be big coming down, so. Yeah. The, um, the DOT has the plans, has all the environmental impact studies done, everything. They just haven't had the funding in the last 15 years to build the bridge that's supposed to connect Port Edwards with County Road Z. And if Governor Dole <laughs> took care of that way back when, $29 million set aside, and he decided to use it for some high speed well, rail. Well, don't tell me about Governor Doyle because I know the man, and let's just leave it at that. I try not to speak ill in public of people. So I think we're going to get some of it. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Okay. Thank you for that shortcut. <laughs> okay, village administrator is finished, correct? Yes, sir. You betcha. Giants. Okay, I'd like to ask for a motion to offer the public hearing for the 2022 village budget as presented at the meeting. Move it. Public hearing will be held on November 30th at 7 p.m. Second. Do I have a first? I did. Dana? Second was John. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> that motion carries. Okay, I'd like to ask for, for a motion to move the December board meeting to November 30th, 2021 for taxing purposes. Move. Second. Motion by Trustee Duncan, <laughs> second by Trustee Bingham. Any discussion? Three no requests to speak. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion can't <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Shame on you. Uh, okay, anything else, Dan? Nope, that's that. All right, trustee comments. Well, here, I hope you take care of yourself and say, <laughs> say hi to Huey, Louie, and Dewey for me, uh, since, since you sound like Donald Duck. Oh, jeez. <laughs> such, such feeling of tenderness for a poor sick lady with a chest infection. Well, at least I decided not to expose all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Tierra. Yes. You're welcome. I do have a question for Ben. Yeah, go ahead, Tierra. Ben, when are the lead pickups going to be done? Is November that... 19th at 3 o'clock. If it helps, it'll be picked up. Do we have two units right now? No, sir. No. No? One? All righty. Ladies? I have nothing. Okay, uh, Boz, please go through the uh, committee meeting. Next week, we'll have public works at four, four o'clock on the 18th, followed immediately by uh, Parks and Rec. At five, we put a pencil in time. Should be 1,700 more, 1,600. <laughs> you guys are killing me. <laughs> yeah, 1,700. Just write a normal yeah, time. I, just, I, I don't just, worry about it. Uh, on, so. Then we have the 30th, uh, so commit, I'm sorry, 22nd November. I'm going out of seat. I'm going to by time on accident. 22nd November at 5 p.m. We'll do the committee the whole. That'll be determined by the president if we waive that off or not. That'll be followed on the 30th by the... Uh, the impart the public comment for the budget followed by the uh the uh board meeting then the only thing scheduled right now is uh 7 december a public safety meeting at 4 p.m so that'll be a week uh, the second week of december and pit 9 december at 5 p.m we because all the budget stuff and the paperwork and all the decisions we need are done at the board meeting we saw no requirement for an FHR meeting in December, but everyone else should be going on, and uh, that should take care of us through the end of the year. What's on the 7th? 7th is public safety, All right. 4 p.m. Okay, uh, uh, Ms. Lindholm and Mr. Diggles, uh, that pit meeting on December 9th, that'll be the one that to watch that committee. It'll be posted on the website and whatever. Uh, uh, address your year, consider the initial uh, stages of that. And Chief, you'll have your, please stay in touch with Chairman Duncan. Appreciate it. Anything else from the trustees? Hearing no request to further speak, I will declare this meeting adjourned at 1957 hours. Okay. 7.57 <laughs> p.m. Oh, according to Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, 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 number one, oh, 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 so other people. Where's the one? He declares waivers tomorrow and Packers.